And just like that, after another weekend of championship drama, it starts all over again. Fresh off of the back of a new takeover from American businessman Shalen Patel, West Bromwich Albion head to Loftus Road to face Queen's Park Rangers on Wednesday night. So, as usual, let's talk through what QPR can expect from Carlos Cobaran's promotion-seeking West Brom side this week. If you enjoyed this preview video, please do consider liking and subscribing, and let's get into it. West Brom have sat in exactly fifth place since November 2023, and with a four-point gap over seventh place Norwich City, their hopes of securing a playoff spot are starting to become more of a reality. Things are looking promising off of the pitch too, because only last Wednesday it was announced that new majority shareholder Shalen Patel's takeover of the club was complete, acquiring an 87.8% shareholding in the club. Meaning a largely unhappy seven and a half years under the stewardship of Chinese businessman Gu Shang Lai is finally over. They were twice relegated from the top flight during his time, and despite bouncing straight back up after their first relegation in 2020, they went straight back down the following season under Sam Allardyce. This season is their fifth out of six outside of the Premier League, something they've not experienced for more than 20 years. And it's not just the performances on the pitch that have been the problem under Lai. Failure to go back up after their relegation in 2021 means that West Brom are no longer receiving parachute payments, something that QPR fans know all too well can have serious financial repercussions should the club not be able to get their finances in order. To make matters worse, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, Lai took a £5 million loan out of the club, and despite the fact that the takeover is now complete, he still hasn't repaid that fee. Six months after taking that money out of the club, it was announced that West Brom would be taking a £20 million loan from US investment firm MSD Holdings. It was said that the money was being used to finance the club's general business operations, but this wasn't generally a positive sign given that MSD had previously lent money to Southampton, Burnley and Derby who went into administration in 2021. Clubs tend to only really seek these kind of loans when they are in financial bother and the fact that the Hawthorns and West Brom's training grounds were being used to secure the loan was not a reassuring sign. Just last November, they took out a supplementary loan from MSD Holdings again to fund the club's business operations. It was different this time though, because in the background of this additional funding, conversations were being had with interested parties to take on the majority shareholding of the club. West Brom fans will be hoping that the announcement of Patel, who also owns a minority shareholding in Bologna, as both majority shareholder and new chairman of the club will signal a new era of financial stability, especially important ahead of a potential return to the Premier League this summer. So given the turmoil of the last few years, it's a miracle that Carlos Cobaran, who joined the club in October 2022, has had a largely successful time at the club in his 18 months so far. When he arrived, West Brom was second from bottom after 16 matches played, but his impact was almost instant with the club winning 10 of their next 13 matches. By the end of last season, they were in contention for a playoff spot all the way up to the final day, but a 3-2 loss to Swansea on that final day meant that they finished ninth. But that's not at all bad given they were second from bottom on his arrival. Corbran has doubled down on his excellent work from last season, with West Brom having been in and around the playoffs for the majority of this campaign, and since November 2023, they have held tight on that fifth place spot. That's despite spending no money on player transfer fees last summer, not even a penny of the £7 million received for the signing of Dara O'Shea by Burnley, and relying predominantly on loan signings for new acquisitions. Although there is an ever-pursuing pack of teams behind them, with 11 matches to go and the consistency they've displayed, it would surely take a complete nosedive now for West Brom not to make the playoffs. They've been remarkably consistent throughout this season, with no noticeable periods of prolonged bad results. The worst I could see was a run of four without a win back in November, but even then they drew three of those. They have the league's third best defence behind only Leicester and Leeds, so it's a little surprise that only the relegated Premier League size and Ipswich Town currently sit above them, with Southampton still holding an 11-point stronghold over fourth place built over their 25 unbeaten spell, despite their patchy run of form in the last five matches. To me, it's this consistency that West Brom have displayed over the course of the season that makes them probably the most formidable side that have headed to Loftus Road since Southampton back in December. But what's interesting is when you look at the form table for the last 10 matches played, QPR and West Brom have an identical record for results. Five wins, two draws and three losses, 
with QPR sitting only below them in the form table on goal difference. West Brom have played teams with a slightly higher average position than those faced by QPR, and their 2-1 home win against Coventry on Friday night made it three unbeaten and just one loss in seven. But QPR also are three unbeaten themselves with three wins on the trot, and they've lost just one of the last eight matches. So with both sides high on confidence, this is set to be a much more exciting clash than the 2-0 away loss away at the Hawthorns back in October. A pretty turgid affair that saw Rangers have no shots on target and one that would soon spin the way of the home side with a slightly controversial penalty and then Jimmy Dunn getting himself sent off for arguing with the ref. West Brom will be without top scorer Thomas Asante, who joined fellow injured strikers Dyke and Maja on the sidelines in the past three matches. But January signing Mikey Johnston a winger who joins on loan from Celtic, will be one to watch with three goals in his seven appearances so far. Now, our last home win against the Baggies came via an 89th minute winner from Charlie Austin against his old side back in 2022, a result which was our first win against them in six in all competitions. This will be a tough one, I think. They're very well organised, they've got a strong defence, but I'm going to back us to keep this winning run going and go with a 2-1 win. Thank you very much for watching as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe and do let me know your own predictions in the comments below. I'll see you on Thursday for my post-match reaction. Cheers.